Well, we're uh, on day six now. We're just uh, leaving our campsite. We slept in a bit this morning and yeah, these are kind of what some of the established campsites are. They're like, you can kind of tell from, uh, if you see these rocks, I think those are for tent pads or something that uh, I think this is a pretty big site. There's actually another site further down. Yeah, we read in the, the Peel Watershed book that uh, they'd made a big effort to take away a lot of the, the fire rings because people keep building new fire rings every time they come to a new spot. And um, yeah, so always use the existing fire ring if you're coming to a spot. And uh, I, we've been taking uh, any place we've uh, set up a new spot, we've uh, taken it apart and we actually haven't really had many, many fires on this trip because it's, we're just using our stove and it's pretty warm out. Deep in the Yukon wilderness on day six, we pack up camp downstream of Mount Royal and head down the lower section of the wind and on to the Peel River. past the big mountain sections lots of sweepers and new channels being cut so there's lots of hazards here we're keeping an eye on so a couple dicey spots and uh, a few big wave trains too Just uh, on the left here is a uh, little wind confluence here with the main wind river. All right, so we're on night six and uh, we're just at the uh, little wind river confluence. We've set up our camp here. So the, the little wind, uh, it's coming towards us. Um, there's one, we're kind of on a little island here, kind of the main portion of it's over there and then there's another branch here. It's a nice little spot with uh, some nice cliffs here. Beautiful uh, crystal clear water here on the Little Wind. The main Wind River is starting to get a little bit siltier but it's still a pretty green color. But uh, yeah, you can see this is where the wind came down through and um, yeah, there's some interesting uh, 
history we were just reading about the Little Wind River and apparently the uh, Gwich'in First Nation people used to travel right up this this Little Wind River all the way to Dawson City so anyways yeah we uh, just had a little uh, glass of wine and we had a little rain shower here so we just set up our our camp here but, uh, and we're just cooking dinner here but uh, yeah I just got the tent in behind and the bugs are out a bit here black flies and mosquitoes what do you think of this spot Buggy, but Little buggy? It's pretty. I couldn't tell. I <laughs> can't tell with my bug gear. <laughs> and we're leaving early in the morning, didn't have breakfast at this site because bugs are about bugs are 10 out of 10. I'd say 8 out of 10. <laughs> On the ferociousness scale. So if you're if you're camping beside Little Wind River, beware of the bugs. Nice spot though. But we're gonna make our way maybe to a point bar or something and eat breakfast there. Nice. A little gray land. There's also a falcon nest up here. I'm watching the parents feed the babies. I can't see it though. Just coming up to this mountain. We've been going through uh, more gravel bars and lots of uh, debris to steer around here. Pulled off to the side here. Look at that. It's like, is it? Is it? That seems like coal, but. Seems like falling off the banks over here. Way. You can see there's these little. Oh, yeah. Like amber pieces in it. Like that. Oh, yeah. Kind of feels like coal. Just here having a shore lunch. We've got dehydrated fruit that we do ourselves. And then the so best we got, part. Oh. We got oranges. Strawberries. And kiwis. Pineapple. There's actually grapefruit in there. And then we did buy some of the the dried banana chips. So I think those are fried. I'm good. And we have homemade <laughs> smoked beef jerky. Mm. Really good. And uh, some uh, wasabi peas. Baby bells. Baby bells. <laughs> and a Kit Kat. <laughs> Done. Probably and not going to eat all of this, but <laughs> this is kind of what we pick away at for lunch. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. And we're just uh, a few kilometers upstream of uh, the Peel River confluence. And you can see uh, says there's uh, pink cliffs on the left and then on the right and uh, as you go by the right one you're right at the just before the confluence so we're almost there we're gonna try and find a spot to camp near the confluence
Well, this is the, uh, the end of the Wind River. We made it to the confluence here with the Peel River. So the Peel comes this direction from that uh, canyon and continues on down here. So we'll be going down there tomorrow. So we're uh, camping in the canyon tonight. Looks like Wolf was walking along here. Just uh, packing up here. It's actually not morning. We slept in because we're gonna take it easy the next couple days. But, uh, it got nice and cool last night, maybe 10 degrees. It's comfortable for sleeping, but it's probably 30 degrees right now, and just sun's just beating down. So yeah, I went for a little. There's a little uh, spring here. It actually comes out of the ground there. So it's the water's pretty clear. The wind is uh, pretty silty at this point. Not, not as silty as uh, rivers like the Yukon at kind of further down, but uh, I think the peel gets a little silty as well as you go through. But uh, yeah, we're just in this beautiful canyon and watching uh, every once in a while some rocks part of the, the ledge will fall down into the to the river and I guess in some some of the canyons along here you have to be careful not to canoe too close to the edge or you get hit by the rocks just something else to be aware of <laughs> so we're gonna try and make it down to the next canyon and check out campsites there Hillary's got her sunscreen Vichy 60 we had a great uh, run on the wind and we spent uh, most of our time in the upper part of the wind. I think we spent about five days up there really in the first 60 kilometers, 60, 70 kilometers where the water is a lot more clear and right in the mountains. I mean it's all beautiful but the last uh, uh, section, the lower part of the wind, uh, we, we kind of just pushed through yesterday. Uh, all right. Here we go. Coming out of the canyon now and it just drops off. All right, so this is uh, what we're using to uh, navigate here on the, the wind and the peel rivers. Um, so on the, the left side here, we've got, uh, this is from, I believe it's called Geo Yukon. Um, it's just a web application on uh, online. It's free. You can print out and make these nice maps at different scales, whatever you kind of want. There's a bunch of options. Uh, most of the maps we, we actually printed with grid lines on them, with coordinates on them. And uh, it's nice. It gives you the air photos. You can see it's a somewhat recent uh, satellite photo so you can see the locations of point bars and things that uh, aren't on some of the the bigger topographic maps which are also a good option uh, you can order those uh, online or uh, in Whitehorse uh, I believe it's called fireweed books it's actually where we got this this book here um, this has been a really good resource on the the trip um, not just for navigation but um, 
This book covers, uh, it's called Wild Rivers of Yukon's Peel Watershed. Um, it covers really everything uh, from, you know, geology, plants, different animals. It tells you all about the flowers, so you can look, um, birds. Um, lots of information here on First Nations history, um, really interesting. Um, and then some of the more uh, more recent, uh, you know, 1800s, 1900s um, uh, exploration and and travel up in these areas. Um, and then it gets into uh, most of it's focused on um, kind of tr canoe trips um, on the Peel watershed. So there's you know there's a whole section on uh, the Wind River gives uh, kind of overview maps of different areas. Um, so yeah, it gives also some information on just different historic sites and natural features along the way. Like you can see here, they've got, it covers, uh, like all the main, uh, tributary rivers, like the Blackstone, the Hart, uh, the, well, the Wind, Bonnet Plume, and the Snake. Um, so it covers all those. So this has been uh, really interesting. We've been reading this every day. The different sections it tells you where some of the, the good places to camp are too so that one's been a really good resource we got that at fireweed books in whitehorse and then we also have our uh, garmin in reach here too that uh, we can use the mapping on it isn't that great it's not very detailed but it does show uh, your coordinates it does show different um, you know it shows a, a decent layout of uh, some of the bigger rivers and uh and some of the mountains and things so and it just also has our two-way communication and sos feature so yeah that's what we've been using to navigate and then we've got our uh our maps printed just in a uh got it in our waterproof case so we're just uh we just double checked and although we didn't really see the uh the fan too well but uh yeah the bonnet plume came in uh, just upstream where we are now and kind of fans out in this big area and so we're just at the start of the the canyon here we're going to try and find uh, apparently there's some good camping areas down in the canyon so we're gonna go through it also says there's some uh some surges and rapids and things like that in there we have to be careful of so we're just going to take it slow and see what's in store for us <laughs> All right. After zigzagging through the first section of the canyon, we made camp near a long gravel bar.
These are uh, dehydrated uh, black bean burgers that uh, we've rehydrated. Well, here's what we're rocking for breakfast today. Got a high energy uh, oatmeal with the, uh, got nuts, chocolate chips, cranberries, protein powder, cinnamon in there. We got uh, some dried fruit here that we've made. A little bit of a uh, little stash of peanut butter over there. And then a little side of uh, smoked beef jerky, just for some extra protein. There we go. We're just in the uh, the canyon here. We camped. Beautiful spot. So we, uh, yeah, we had our dinner out on the on the bar here yesterday, and then we we put our tent up in the up in the trees a bit, and it was kind of shady this morning, which was nice. And uh, so yeah, we came through this narrow canyon last night. Let's climb up here. As you can see, it zigzags through this section that we came through. It wasn't too technical, but uh, there's some boils and some some decent waves in there as well. I'm sure in higher water it's pretty rough. And then we get through here. It's pretty calm, but then down here is where the the more challenging part is. So you can see there's a big uh, wave train that really kind of turns around by that big rock down there. And there's actually two really big boils, uh, whirlpools. One on the left side, and then one circulates down actually beyond this. There's a bay kind of beyond this point bar where there's it's a huge pool with uh, logs just circulating in it. So we're gonna have to we're gonna go down. I think we're gonna go along the the right side and then kind of just get into the current and try and just take it right down and avoid getting into any of those whirlpools. Um, again, I don't think it'll be an issue even if we did. It's pretty uh, fairly low water right now, but. Um, one thing to really keep an eye on uh, if you're coming through here in high water, it's uh, you could get yourself into some trouble there. So then we're going to ride through. And one of the interesting things we read in the, the Peel Watershed book was uh, the First Nations, the Tetlikwitchin people, when they would come down, they would make these uh, moose skin boats. And so they would ride down through the canyons and, and down the peel and through this canyon but they would actually the women and and babies they would drop them off um, at the start of the canyon and they would have to walk along the the ridges and then the the men would pick them up down at the end of the canyon i guess um, because it was uh quite dangerous running the river but um yeah pretty interesting that uh how they how they did that would have been quite a trek even just going on these hills let alone uh, also doing uh in a moose skin boat but yeah very interesting all right That was pretty easy. I could see it being pretty challenging in uh, high, high water. <laughs> Some big boils in there. As we continued along the Peel River, we observed dramatic geomorphic processes where banks were eroding before our eyes. 
When paddling on wild mountainous rivers, don't expect features and landmarks along the banks to remain constant from one year to the next. You can see there's like um this is the what's called the burning bubbling rock. Potentially, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's I don't know. But... It's like burning right there. Oh you can see the flames. That's crazy. Well, it's been a long day. We've, distance-wise, we haven't gone that far, but we've been just kind of looking for a place to camp, and I think we're just a little bit picky. <laughs> but yeah, we're uh, we're not that far from Taco Bar, but I think we're gonna. There's a point bar coming up. I think we'll probably just set up shop there. All the banks are pretty ripped up from the spring. Hard to just set up in the forest. Yeah. Chef Eric, what do we have for dinner tonight? Oh, well, we got some uh, fry bread with uh, rosemary, walnuts, parmesan, cheese. Mm. It's like a bannock mix. We got a shepherd's pie cooking here. Mm. And then we'll have some mashed potatoes to finish it off. Yum. We didn't have uh, lunch. Today, we're just pretty hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, we stayed last night up on this uh, bank on the inside of this big bend. It wasn't our uh, finest campsite, but it did the job and we set up the uh, tent up here. Managed to have a spot out of the sun for most of the night in early morning. But you can see uh, this is an interesting landscape here this is caused from all the uh all the debris from uh from ice in the spring and you can actually see here you'll see almost random piles of uh, uh material here and some different colored stone and things like that that uh, have been I think, caught up on uh, ice jams and um, some of it too i think has been pushed around but uh some of it almost is like it's been stuck to the ice and then just dropped off here when it melts. But yeah, the, the forest is just completely uh, destroyed in here. So it, it makes for harder uh, camping because a lot of this area at the lower section uh, between uh, Bonnet Plume and uh, Snake River. Um, but there's lots of point bars and places to camp too.
I can smell a little bit of smoke in the air. It seems like there's a, a forest fire somewhere. Could be, could be hundreds of kilometers away, but you can, you can see the haze in the sky a little bit too. A few days of dry weather and then you get fires, so. out here on the Peel River, searching for something. Looking for a shore lunch. Whoa. What have we here? Some flavor blasted explosive pizza goldfish. What a find. kind of chugged along a few kilometers from where we were last night but we're maybe an hour and a half to two hour paddle from taco bar and we found this uh, pretty cool spot along this uh, big slope but uh, this little inlet here this is all clear water like uh, must be a spring or something comes out it's like this aquamarine blue color when the sun's out. So we were able to go for a swim, get some clear water, get, get cleaned off. And then we found some, uh, some spots here that had some sandy patches for uh, putting the tent and uh, shelter up. We had a little storm, thunderstorm earlier. No, it's a really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's silty. It's not quite as the peel here is not quite as silty as say the the Yukon River at uh, Dawson City if you've ever been there. But it's in that area, just downstream of the White. I think it's called the White River. Is uh, it's like chocolate milk almost. Mm -hmm. But here it's it's not quite that silty, but it's still silty enough that it'll uh, it'll clog up your uh, water filters pretty quick. So we've, uh, when we have filled up here, we put it in our uh, pots for an hour or so and then dumped it into our filters after, let it settle a bit. Our campsite. It's probably 6:30 here. And we're gonna do an evening paddle down to Taco Bar. But yeah, this is where we had our camp, and this is like our best attempt at no trace camping. Try and make it look like you're never here. And don't leave anything behind.
Here's the uh, mouth of the Snake River. Apparently another uh, beautiful river here on the Peel watershed. It's supposed to be a pretty epic uh, trip. So we're just about two kilometers uh, upstream of Taco Bar. But yeah, Snake River. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe some, one maybe one day. <laughs> All right, and here we are at Taco Bar. Taco Bar. Yeah. Nice little paddle tonight from our last campsite. We did a, an evening paddle and uh, yeah, we found uh, Taco Bar. It's just uh, kind of a big wide open gravel bar and this is where uh, the plane's gonna come in tomorrow morning. So we're gonna get ourselves uh, set up for the night and get ready for the plane ride tomorrow. <laughs> well, here we are, morning of our pickup day at Taco Bar. Yeah. We're just having a coffee, waiting for the plane to come in. They've uh, told us kind of where to roughly where to wait with the canoe and the gear and I don't know how long it takes them to get from Mayo but uh, they'll be coming in here soon probably. <laughs> 